Right, welcome back. Uh, carrying on from uh, yesterday's theme, we're going to do another dry fly here. This is going to be the hopper, uh, a very, very popular uh, dry fly for big lakes and small lakes alike. Uh, a generic insect imitation sometimes imitates uh, daddy long legs or uh, hawthorn flies, even sedge flies sometimes. Um, and then the smaller sizes, 10s and uh, sorry, 12s and 14s, uh, very much the emerging buzzer as is so many of our patterns, dry fly patterns are represent an emerging buzzer. So uh, nice lightweight hook. This is a um, B170 size 10. Uh, thread again is just red UTC and 70. So this fly, as most flies, are made up of three sections. You've got the, the body, the thorax, and the head. So this one has a, uh, this is going to be the fiery brown version, this one. So first one at a time, there's a little bit of rib. There's a bit of pearl mylar here. Just get that caught in and wound down. Love these flies. Love these flies. As I say, they're very versatile. You can fish them traditionally dry. Fish them on a tip line wet. Um, fish them on an intermediate twiddled or pulled. Brilliant, brilliant flies. Okay, let's just wax this thread. Just to give it a little bit of adhesion. So we're on to fiery brown. And there go my dogs. God knows what they're chasing after. Uh, fiery brown seals fur is going to be the body. So let's just work ourselves a bit on here. A nice taper. Not going to too mad with it, but you still want a nice body. This is a size 10 after all, so it's quite a big fly. It's going to do us. Nice and tight. So what we'll do is we'll get that on nice and tight and then we'll, uh, we'll brush it when the fly is all done. So just starting there, just at the back of the hook there, just bring that up. You want that to come up two thirds of the way. And that's us. Nice and easy, nice and simple. That's there. And then we're going to bring that mylar through the body. Nice and tight wraps. Three times fine and lock it in. Smashing. Okay. And for the legs, legs of knotted pheasant tail. Uh, this is what really gives its pattern, its appeal, its look. So um, you can buy the knotted pheasant tail ready knotted. Um, you can buy it pre done or like me, just do it as you go. Um, it's quite simple. I might do a little video on how to knot the pheasant tail legs. Very easy to do. Anyhow, select six of those. And then you just want to them so you've got three and three so you've got two pairs like so so you've got three and three okay and you can offer those up to the fly and just try and drop them down either side of the fly it just makes for a neater fly the fish really won't be able to tell just drop that down either side of the fly like so just try to judge your length you don't want these too far back forward so we can get these turned around the right way that's better that's better come on there you go so yeah you don't want to drop too far back down the fly three and three either side just pinch them in judge your length that's about right and catch him in like so trim off there's six on this fly on the smaller sizes when I go down to 12s and 14s four is fine Fish aren't counting when they come up there, and right? So you've got those legs just tied in like that behind the hopper. Okay, next bit, just a little bit more seals fur up there over the top of the thorax there, just to finish it all in. Just a little pinch, nothing too mad. Perfect. Just to finish that in, giving yourself plenty of space up here. Be a hackle, okay. Your hackle's going to go in front of the hook here. 
for this is a uh, brown uh, hen. I'm just going to select a nice feather somewhere from the middle of the cape somewhere. That's fine. Pull that out and I'm just going to strip off the rubbish bit at the bottom here. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to offer that in. Just catch that in. Just like so. Okay. And then put, bring the thread back to just above the thorax. Okay. So this is out that way. Trim off this waste of barb. And then either with your fingers or your hackle pliers. Just use the hackle pliers for the minute here. Just bring that round and you're going to try and pop that over the hook about four times excuse me i've got the camera quite close to the fly which makes this a little bit awkward four times lovely and just run the thread through the hackle to secure it and push everything backwards it to the front now and just finish off nice little head there and we're going to whip finish that one just trying to hold everything back lovely Trim off the thread, trim off a bit of waste feather here, like so, and then the last thing we're going to do with that is just run your, uh, your brush over it, just to scruff it up a little bit. And that's your fiery brown hopper as i say brilliant dry fly when you uh, gink this up just a little bit of gink running along the back of the hook here just a tiny bit well with most times with gink on the back of your hand dab the back of the fly into the hook and it's ready to go you don't want to over gink this because you want this to sit right in the surface film and that's an absolute killer that is uh, fish is a part of a team is a top dropper on a part of a team it's a great sight to fly uh, so you can see where all the rest of your cast is, or just fished singly, uh, especially around the big weed beds. Um, it's devastating. Graf and Rutland have had some superb back of the season on these big size tens, and then throughout the rest of the year, early season, mid season, when they're on the emerging buzzers, uh, fish these in a, a size 12 or 14s. They're very good in little 14 for the emerging buzzers, but uh, yep, yeah, there you go. That's the fiery brown. Hopper. Hope you like that. Click subscribe, click like, and uh, well, no doubt I'll get another video out to you soon. Thanks very much for watching.